What's going on? Welcome to Operation Self Reset. It's all about emotional warfare today. What is going on, you freaking awesome people? Welcome back to Operation Self Reset. My name is Jake Naraki, coming to you live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where each and every week we dive into a different topic in the world of personal development so you can become a little bit better, just a little bit. How amazing would it be if you had a good traction, you had good beliefs, you had good habits, good routines to help you move forward in your life, and all it takes sometimes is a little wake-up call, just a little tip, a tool, a tactic, and today we are going to dive real deep into kind of the, the method and the madness behind how we make our decisions and how do we get forward and, and move forward in our lives beyond the habits, beyond the routines, beyond the success principles, the real essence of what happens between our two ears, uh, very important stuff that is going to be happening right here on today's show. Before we get into it, there is no sponsor, but I want to offer you guys something special. Look, I'm trying to reach my goal of 300 reviews on iTunes, and of course, <laughs> I would hope to get beyond that. But um, to kind of, I guess, uh, to give you some type of benefit here, a cause and effect, if you want to call it that, if you leave a review on iTunes... All you have to do is screen capture that and send me an email to jake at operationselfreset.com and you will have your choice of getting one of two shirts. I have one shirt that is gray, it says be freaking awesome, and the other shirt which is blue, it says uh, bring it. And bring it is a chant, a, a thing that we say during uh, the Self Reset Power event. It's a three-day event up in 2018 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, when we walk on fire, we say bring it, you know, because when you're standing at that bed line, that coal line, and you're standing there and you're like, oh my gosh, am I going to get hurt? Is it going to, you know, irritate me? Am I going to be able to do this? And when those emotions and ideas are flooding into your body, you need to Bring it. You know, you need to kind of like move forward. And even though the emotions and the chatter is going on, you still got to bring it. Bring your best self and take that step. Take that leap of faith. Um, again, now the, the fire walk is just a kind of an obstacle and, and a kind of a miniature life event that we all go through. And it's a great way to kind of alter the way that you see the world, the way that you internally think for you to move forward. So with that being said, if you want to get yourself a free t-shirt, all you have to do is go to iTunes, leave a review for the Operation Self Reset podcast. Once you do that, screenshot it and or email me and say, hey, Jake, this is my Apple ID number or ID person number thingamajigger. Uh, I left this review here. This is where I live. I will send you a no obligation t-shirt directly to your house. I will pay for shipping. I pay for everything. Um, it's just a little gift from me to you for the holiday season. If you could do that, be great. Um, obviously, you can tell me what size you want, V-neck, no neck, crew neck, whatever, whatever you want. And uh, we can go from there. And of course, it'd be great just to chit chat with you. So um, with that being said, thank you very much. So today we're going to be talking about emotional warfare. Now, emotional warfare for me personally is a huge topic. It is a book that I'm actually in the process of writing. I know I say this all the time. I'm writing a book. I'm writing a book. And yet there's no books. Well, there's a lot of irons in the fire, but I'm really kind of understanding the, the true essence of what it takes to be and to complete a reset. And a reset is obviously nothing more than understanding that you have the ability to make the choice to get up in the morning and say, hey, I want to show up as a different individual. Now, that's all fine and well, right? We all get that and it's all like, oh, kumbaya, that's amazing, good for you to improve your life. But at the end of the day, there are a lot of things that are go into a decision. And a decision is nothing more than understanding, A, what kind of outcome you want, the future self, um, where you're at, and potentially where where could you go? Do you believe in that uh, ability of getting to that place? There's a lot of variables, right? And so through this journey, through this process, we need to understand that there's a lot of things that stand in the way. And for me, my belief, and the reason why I'm writing this book, the biggest thing is understanding what 
the deal is with emotions and feelings. A lot of us, the reason why we don't get up in the morning, the reason why we don't choose to do that new habit or routine or to have a salad instead of a burger or, or you know, go and network as opposed to stay within the confines of our home, stay extra at work or leave early or whatever, it doesn't necessarily have to do with how smart you are or you know the, the, the pain points that are going on in your life or where you want to go in the future, it really has to deal with the emotional welfare that you have in that given situation. It's all about understanding the emotions and feelings that you have at that minute, at that point in your day, your week, your month, or year that allow you to make the, the right or wrong decision. And so today I'm going to dive deep into the psychology and of course the the where do these emotions and feelings come from and how do we get a better handle on them now this episode is not the one-stop shop this is not the creme de creme of how to improve your life but this is a starting ground of understanding where these emotions and feelings come from so you and I have a better ability to go out there in the world and kind of be the UFC fighter, kind of do the the karate chops and punches of these emotions and feelings that get in our way, so we can continue and move forward. Because look, I'm I'm human too. I'm not uh, the guru. I'm not the the you know the Alibaba of of personal development. I wake up in the morning and I hit the snooze button. Sometimes I wake up early. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm happy. Sometimes I'm sad. Sometimes I'm crabby. All different types of feelings, just like you guys. And I understand that if we can get a handle on where these emotions and feelings come from. They can allow us to understand, okay, what I'm feeling right now is a cause and effect of what I did earlier, or also understanding that sometimes the feelings and emotions that we have going through our body is nothing more than a response of what has happened externally to us. Something that we felt, something that we smell, something that we see, something that we experience. And from that, it dictates where we go. It's it's like almost like a, a tree, right? You're at the trunk of the tree, and it's just one trunk, but as you go up, there are a lot of different branches and limbs that we can go through. And hopefully this will give you a good reference point of understanding that, you know what, these feelings and emotions are are kind of caused by certain aspects and allow us to move forward or to stay where we're at. And of course, we're going to dive into it right now. So with that being said, let's get into the nitty gritty and the world of emotional warfare. So the first thing is this. Where do emotions and feelings come from? Number one, they come from a, a, a kind of a core complex of four different parts, and they, that is called the limbic system. Now, as a disclaimer, as a disclaimer, disclaimer alert, I am a very bad pronouncer. I mix up on words. These words <laughs> probably are, are they're technical the way that I have them outlined on my sheet, but I'm not going to say them correctly. If you want a more elaborate and pronounced type of podcast where everything is scientifically researched to the 10th degree and everything is pronounced so specifically, then I will have to say as a disclaimer, this is not that type of show. I am real. Um, I have a learning disability. I, I do not have the most pronounced and uh, dynamic vocabulary of a uh, of a an adult in this new world that we live in, but I'm going to try to do my best to break down the neuroscience of where emotions and feelings come from for you to get a better grasp. Okay, so you know what? Don't don't uh, you know? Don't throw rocks at me. Look, we all mess up, so I'm just going to keep on moving forward. The one thing that I try to do in this podcast series is to be raw, real, and relevant to you. And the only way to do that is to show my true self. I, I don't edit. I don't do anything to alter this podcast because I feel that this is a deep conversation between you and I. And if I alter this in a way where I sound fake or I don't really fall within the confines of who I am, who Jake Naraki is, then I'm not doing myself justice and I'm not doing you justice because then I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make myself better than what I'm currently at. And I'm growing with you. This is a give and take relationship. So hopefully you justify that and understand that. So with that, Let's get going into the limbic system. So there's four different parts, okay? And these four parts are kind of within the the top position of our brain. I'm not going to get real detailed because, of course, this is an audio podcast. But there are four areas that I really want to talk about that sit upon the brain stem. Number one is the thalamus. And this is the relay station from what you hear, from what you see, and what you feel, but unfortunately, not from what you smell. 
Now, the reason why this is important, the thalamus kind of regulates all the things that are going on around us, our different senses. Now, you're thinking, why not smell? Well, smell is actually dictated from a different part within the brain, and so I'm not going to get into that because it really doesn't help us understand emotions or feelings any better. But the, thal the thalamus is basically absorbing information from what you see, from what you hear, from what you feel, and figuring out where is the best kind of highway for that information to go. Okay, fair enough. Okay, the next part is the uh, obligata. The obligata is a, um, it stimulates that where it kind of blah, blah, blah. it hangs out where anger and violence and fear and anxiety sit. If you stimulate this area, you get one of those kind of feelings, right, of anger, violence, fear, anxiety, and a whole slew of different emotions that come out of it. But if you destroy the obligata, you get really mellow. You kind of get depressed. You get into the state of, like, confusion, and, and everything is just, like, almost dreamland. And so individuals, when they have chronic or a very hard-hitting car accident or they get thumped on the head really hard, the obligata is a very sensitive part of the brain. And if that thing gets rattled enough where it kind of shuts down or reboots, you kind of get into the state of almost quote unquote a vegetable. And we've all seen that or experienced it from, from hearing it or seeing it on TV. And it's a very important area of our brain that kind of helps us survive. And the reason why I really focus in on the anger and the violence or the fear and the anxiety is because those responses are the responses that allow us to get out of danger. And if we're able to get away from danger, that means that you and I live. The fourth is called the hippocampus. Hippocampus. It helps form new memories, and it converts short-term memories, STM for short, short, into long-term memories. This helps us with understanding emotions. So I'm going to say that again. Basically, it helps us form new memories. It converts a short-term memory into a long-term memory. Now, this is where a lot of feelings and different emotions come from because... These memories that we create, for example, if you were at a birthday party and you were to recall that situation, what would that situation look like mentally to you? There's a lot of people, probably close friends or family. There's a birthday cake, kids, people are smiling, they're singing, they're joyful, they're having a good experience. So now fast forward, that gets put into our long-term memory as kind of like a file folder. Next time we go through a shopping center or we go to work and we see a birthday cake, it recalls that memory of something pleasurable, um, uh, enjoyable, something fun, something engaging. And when we see that, we go, oh, it's somebody's birthday. It's a celebration. We get into a joyful spirit without us even kind of even thinking about it. It happens so fast because these reference points of us seeing different things around us bring up these old memories. And the hippocampus is really a, a key component Components in understanding where emotions and feelings come from because the history of our memories from day one to where we are now is nothing more than a reference guide of where we're going to go in the future and also a reference guide of things that are going to help or hurt us. The fourth is called the hippocampus. It's the size of a kidney bean. It regulates the fight or flight response or the rest and di digest response. It also controls the release of hormones into your blood, such as um, adrenaline, epinephrine, and those chemicals alter if us are uh, alter us in a way to either sprint forward or to stay where we're at. Again, that regulates the fight or flight or the rest and digest response. Now. These four key components make up the limbic system. Really cool, awesome, and you're probably thinking to yourself, what the heck does that have to do with my understanding in the world where I'm at today? This podcast is all about helping me move forward, and I don't feel that's really justified. Again, if you can kind of pull back the layer and understand where feelings and emotions come from, it can help regulate the way that we go into our world. For example, the one thing, the key component all of us have trouble with, usually about 90% of the time, is waking up, especially if we have to wake up earlier than what we're used to. When we hear that alarm go off, chances are we're not thinking joy to the world and how we want to you know, sing to the mountaintops. It's usually a case of we're irritated, we don't have the, uh, we're, we're tired, um, I need to sleep in an extra couple minutes, I, I don't want to handle the day yet, all different types of feelings and emotions. But if we understand that the the hippocampus holds and forms new and old or new or correction holds and helps us 
mold short-term memories into long-term memories, that can allow us to understand that some way, somehow, I had the, the history and the idea that waking up early was going to harm me or by not getting an extra 10 minutes is going to alter the way that I show up in the world. And that is the way that we believe which allows us to have these feelings and emotions to go out into the space that we are currently living in. Now, to kind of hit this home and to bring it uh, to fruition here a little bit with where I'm at, and the, the example that I want to share with you guys is that when I was in high school, this is a very personal story. Um, when I was in high school, I had a kind of a, a chattering mouth. I, I thought I was uh, bigger than what I was made to be. I was an athletic gentleman. I played a lot of great sports. I was decent. And let's just say I, I wanted to mix it up a little bit. And one day, um, there was a group of around 20 older students when I was a sophomore, and I got into a fist fight in the middle of the street um, right outside high school. And not too much happened. I got punched in, in the ear. I got basically punched on the side of the head. Now, fortunately, I have a, like kind of a hard head. I, was, uh, I played hockey, football, so my skull could take a beating. And when that happened, there was a lot of emotions, as you can imagine, that go through your body when you get punched in the face. Literally, and it is. I think there's a great quote by Mike Tyson that states, "Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face." And I think it's very true. Um, a punch in the face can be a physical punch in the face, or it could be a life-changing moment. It could be a wake-up call in any facet of different, any shape and size, depending on where you're at in your life. But when you do get punched in the side of the head or in the face, there's a lot of responses that happen that you can't control. Um, as you know, in the world today, if there's a terrorist attack, which is very prevalent, uh, it happens all over the world, um, and it's going to continue because of the type of world that we live in today, those responses are not controlled by the way that we think it through. Like if we hear an explosion, we hear gunfire, we hear something – we don't really have time to process it. Our body reacts. And our body reacts in a way that we sometimes catch ourselves almost almost running like until we kind of like mentally get clear. And the reason for that and the reason why these emotions get flooded and all different types of stuff is because of our ANS, our automatic nervous system. And this was a really surprising statement and a surprising idea when I did my research because I understood that feelings and emotions kind of come from the brain or past experiences or from the, the environment around us. I get that. But if we are in a life-altering event, chances are we're not going to have time to think it through. So that is where our ANS, automatic nervous system, kicks on in. And it, and it just fires on all cylinders and to bring you back into the experience of getting punched in the head <laughs> punched in the side of the head um that automatic nervous system really kicked up. It really went into the high gear. And things really started to increase because of fear, or they also increase, depending if you're in a state of excitement, like going on a roller coaster or something like that. Um, but in the case that I was in in that moment, it was a case of fear. It was a case of, oh my gosh, I'm threatened. My body is being attacked physically. And in that moment, there are two different types of branches that fire within that automatic nervous system. Uh, the first is the sympathetic. And the sympathetic controls the fight or flight. And in that moment, I was in that fight or flight full out. But the also the second part is the parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is the uh, the rest and digest side. And the parasympathetic is basically understanding that when things are, you're comfortable, you're in that state of comfort, you're in that state of things are going well for, with you, you feel safe within your environment, aka your home or workplace, um, that's where the paramasis is really kind of firing on cylinders. But for me in that moment, the sympathetic, the, the fight or flight response was in full effect. Now, to, to kind of bring you into the automatic nervous system and to kind of tell you the different chunks here of what happens when the fight or flight response takes place, it's really interesting. So first, again, when I got struck in the side of the head, my body went to that state. I had no control over really what was going on. And I kind of recall it a little bit. I mean, it was many years ago, but I remember that moment very vividly. And even though I was trying to process exactly what was going on in front of me, my body was already kind of preparing itself for battle in, in this regard. 
first, my pupils started to dilate. And the reason why they dilate is so I could bring in more light, so I could have a better vision of what was going on around me. The second is my, uh, my, my saliva gland started to decrease um, because the more saliva that is produced, it, it, your body has to process that, right? You have to swallow. You're using more energy. So in the case of maybe you doing a presentation, uh, you standing in front of people, you making a scene somewhere, your saliva, usually people get dry mouth because they're uncomfortable. The reason it is is because they're in a state of a fight or flight also. They're in a state of their body is trying to regulate what is going on, and they don't want to use any extra energy, aka your body is trying to stay to itself, hey, let's not use any extra energy of making saliva for us to uh, decrease the uh, ability for our body to respond. The next, my lung and heart started to increase, so my body could produce and um, oxygenate my muscles, my organs, my brain, so I could think clearer, so my muscles could react faster, and that all happened automatically. The next was my liver started to release uh, glucose. Glucose is a sugar. And the reason why my liver did that, to give me a little burst of energy, to kind of wake up, to kind of get out of that, get out of that haze a little bit for my body to, to go into that response of fight or flight. The, uh, the next, adrenaline glands uh, were stimulated by hormones. And these uh, gl uh, glands were released into my blood in the form of adrenaline. And we all know what adrenaline is, a shot of adrenaline. It gets you jacked up, right? It gets you, you know, fly higher than a kite. A lot of people drink coffee to get that little bit of uh, adrenaline kick that makes you feel alert, awake, and ready to rock and roll. And then the, the, the next, of course, my GI tract, my bladder started to decrease. It stopped processing. My, my stomach stopped um, digesting food. All the reason because my body needed to prepare itself for quote-unquote battle. It needed to shut down things to give my body the best chance to fight. Now, for you... You may be thinking to yourself, wow, that's really interesting. Wow, that is really crazy. I never thought of it like that, and neither did I. But it's amazing how our body is able to react well beyond our process and our level of thinking. So as much as I would love, you, love to say to you that you have full control over your emotions and your feelings, at some points you really don't. Your body goes into this autopilot. Your body kind of takes over and says, whoa, 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 whoa. shut it down, muchacho. We're going to prepare you. We're going to almost kind of turn you into a transformer where this transformer is driving as a, as a nice car and then all of a sudden it bursts out into this war machine because things are going, things are happening without even processing it. And so as a, as a step kind of outside of this lecture here, I want to take a second and say one thing that I state a lot in my lectures is that we all have more to give than what we're currently giving. And the reason why I say that and now I'm able to back it is because of this automatic nervous system. If things really get tough, you are prepared well beyond your conscious level of thinking. You have the ability to go up and beyond your status quo 10x, 20x, even 100x, depending on who you are, what, where you're at, and what situation you're going into. And so never think for a second that you don't have the confidence, you don't have the ability, you don't have the resources, you don't have the ideas, because your body is designed to help you fight in a crazy, chaotic world if you ever get into that situation. And so for me in that situation, getting back to my story of getting punched in the side of the head, my body reacted. My body was like, it's go time. But... but but, of course, it's a big but, I was, when I got punched in the side of the head, I was in my vehicle with my window down, seat belted. I had a couple other buddies in the car. I exited the vehicle uh, when I got punched in the side of the head, and I was surrounded probably around 20, 25 guys. And the one thing that you should know anytime that if you were to get into a fist fight or altercation, you should always go after the biggest talker. In that case, the biggest talker was not the person that landed the punch, and I knew that. I knew the person that landed the punch was... Pretty well qualified. And second of all, there was probably out of that 25, there's probably another three or four guys that would jump in if um, if I was to attack. And so my <laughs> processing in that moment was to retreat and, and fight another day. Um, a, a, a side note here, was, was that good or bad? I don't know. Um, it was very emotionally challenging for me to be in a situation like that where I retreated. It was very disheartening. It hurt. It was. I was in pain. I cried a lot. I was sad a lot. I replayed that story tenfold, a hundredfold, and even to this day, um, you know, I th what I was probably fifteen at the time, so maybe probably eighteen years ago. Um, 
and I was older, I mean, 15, no, I, was, I was driving, so I was, must have been 16 or 17, whatever the case was, it was many years ago, and I still analyze it to this day. Um, would I react differently? I hope so. Would I be prepared differently? Uh, differently, Of course. Um, but also, too, am I glad that I didn't engage? Possibly, you know, the, the situation, it could have gone really sideways, or it could have been over quick. I don't know. Um, that's the weird thing about life. You don't know what you're going to do until you're in that situation. And it doesn't matter if you're listening to this podcast or you're listening to other shows or reading books on different things when it comes to um, enacting your body and, and, and moving forward. You don't know how good that tool or tactic or resource is going to uh, allow you to move forward until you're in that situation. And again, it doesn't have to be in a situation where you're da- in danger. It doesn't have to be in a situation where things are going chaotic, but it can be in a situation where you think you're prepared, but then you're actually not. And you don't know that until you're in that situation. And that's why practice is crucial. That's why, you know, game like scenarios or practice like you play kind of comes into play in the world that we live in because when you're in that situation you don't know how you're going to react until you're in it and the only way to simulate that is to as act as if and getting back to my earlier statements back way back in the archives of episodes 1 through 20 I stated a lot about act as if and if you act as if you are that person or you act as if that you have that ability I, I believe that you're a little more qualified to uh, react correctly in the situation that lays in front of you in that moment. And a story that's coming to mind right now, right here, right now, um, a gentleman that I worked with uh, fell into a hole um, while we were fighting a fire. Now, I work for the fire department. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on. The guy that fell into the floor, he was fine. It was a very odd experience because we have practiced it. We, we've dealt with radio communication. We have gone through 10, 20, 30, 100 times on what needs to happen. But it wasn't until somebody right next to me fell into this hole that I... I did my best to react in a way that um, I felt was in my training. And luckily, I was trained correctly to help that individual out, and everything worked out. But you don't know how good you know something until you go into it. And getting back to emotions and feelings and emotional warfare, these emotions and feelings that we go into and the, the things that we digest on a consistent basis, you don't know what you don't know until you're in it. And I keep on hitting that and pounding that into your brain because you may feel like solidified and ready to roll. And that's a great way. That's where confidence comes from and self-esteem. But until you're in that situation, you need to go all out. And you need to control, to some regard, the um, automatic nervous system. You can't control it fully, obviously, because your body does it automatically. That's why it's called automatic. Um, But those feelings, emotions that catch up to you, you need to dictate that a little bit. You need to be in full control for you to move into the right uh, frame of reference for you to battle that correctly. So so that is the, the automatic system. We talked about the four parts. Where do feelings and emotions come from? Obviously, feelings and emotions really dictate from two, from two places. Number one, past experiences. Um, number two, experiences you're, you're currently in right now. And then, of course, the third, which I just said two, but the third would be elements, You know, your, your senses that you're experiencing uh, from different aspects of your life. Now, when I was really investigating where do feelings and emotions come from, there's a lot of different theories on the 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 science behind it after researching countless individuals and countless uh, neuroscience and countless individuals that have really put their life work to understanding this there's a couple of of key kind of um kind of events outlines that that happen for us to feel or to experience an emotion and there's one that i'm going to share with you it's called the larius theory the larius theory it was uh invented by james larius and james really believed that it that all all emotions and feelings come from an event that is created to then you appraise it like is it good or bad and then that creates the emotion plus then your response to that emotion, okay? There's also a singer theory. The singer theory is that there's an event, there's a response, there's identify the reason for the response, so basically your brain is trying to process and then the emotion. So as you can see, a lot of these theories involve a event, 
a physiological response of some kind that creates the emotion. They're, sometimes they're moved around, sometimes you know the emotion comes first or whatever, but needless to say, it all happens when there's an event. And an event can be anything from waking up on time, to wanting to journal, to eating the right foods, to networking, to going on the world, being a good or bad person, whatever the case may be, the event that happens to you through one of your senses, the um, kind of the response to that event creates the emotion. And so the question is, okay, we understand how emotions and feelings kind of pop up in our lives. We understand the event is kind of the, the first step in creating that feeling or emotion. So what events are going on in your life today that are altering the feelings or emotions that you're creating? I'm going to say that again. What event is happening today that is creating the emotion or feelings that's happening right here, right now? The event is, is that you're listening to this podcast. You may be engaged in this or you may not, depending on who you are, what you're about, and the kind of things that are going on around you. The question I have for you is, if your emotion and feeling is down and depressed or angry or sad or whatever the feeling that you don't like right now, what was the event that caused it? And you can kind of play this game of cause and effect, right? Kind of the old school, uh, you know, board games that you play when you're a child that understand that, you know, the matching game. Okay, well, I got a red square here. I got to find the red square square there to make it match and make me go, oh, okay, I see the correlation between the two. The thing is, though, we don't really play that game anymore when we're adults. We think we're beyond that. But chances are the only way to understand the feeling and emotion you have right now is to rewind the play clock a little bit and to see what event happened that altered the way that you felt or feel right here, right now. Now, along these this lines of different types of theories, there are also universal emotions. There are universal emotions that every single different type of person in this world, doesn't matter from race to gender to religion to beliefs to where they're located in the country, uh, doesn't matter at all. The researchers, the neuroscientists, the, the individuals, the scientists understand that there are, there are six universal emotions. And they are happiness, sadness, Fear, disgust, anger, and surprise. They are universal because they're considered uh, facial expressions. And a facial expression is an expression that you have on your face. And, and a facial expression is nothing more than what can be re represented from, from you where you are to a person on the other side of the globe or from where you are right now to any other individual. And that starts at birth. Because we know when a baby is happy or sad instantly because they are reading our faces. And when they see a parent smiling, they understand that is a joyful experience because it's warm and cozy. They also understand that experience of tears or upside down faces or a lot of squinting or wrinkles is a sign of distress. And they understand that. And as an infant, they play that game through childhood. And they know how to pull out different emotions. And even though they don't know how to talk, even though they don't really know how to understand words yet, but they do do know facial recognition. And facial recognition is based on one of those six universal emotions. And so for you, how does this represent you as an adult today right here, right now? Chances are you're representing one of those six emotions. And the way that you're representing those six, one of, six emotions is the way that you personally feel. There is no way that you can have on a very grimace, angry look on your face, but yet be joyful and full of butterflies and, and squirrels chasing nuts uh, internally. I don't even know where that came from, but, but it's true though. So if you want to change what is going on internally, you have the ability to kind of alter the facial expression that you're representing. Now, back at Stanford, way back in the 1950s, they had individuals that were quote-unquote depressed. They had they split the group in two. They gave one group a traditional medication to deal with depression. The second group, they removed all the medication. And they told them every single morning for 15 minutes, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror and smile. Smile, smile, smile for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, go about your day. Over a course of three months, they understood that the individuals that looked at themselves and smiled were happier majority percentage or majority of the days per month than the individuals that took the, uh, the non-depression pills on a regular basis. And so what does that show us? That by you altering the way that you show yourself, express yourself on the outside, has 100% certainty correlates with the expression that you have internally.
And so if you want to alter how you're feeling right here right now, you have the choice of altering the facial expression through one of these six universal emotions. And if you're able to do that, you're able to alter the feelings or emotions that happen internally. Cool, all fine and well, Jake. Bravo, great stuff, but how the heck does that help us today? Where does the emotional warfare come in regards to how I'm living today? Well, chances are you're not in a fight or flight response. A lot of the choices and the decisions that we make on a daily basis are not in a fight or flight response. Usually they're based off of the uh, the other um, the other type of branch. The other type of branch is the uh, parasomatic. And the parasomatic is off based off of the rest and digest. When you're in a relaxed state, your pupils are constricted, you, you increase salivation, your respiratory rate and your heart rate goes down, your body's processing and digesting, your body is working. And when your body is working, you have less brain energy to process the type of decisions that are going on. Now, it would be easy for me to say, well, if you want to make a great decision, you need to be in a fight or flight response. And ch chances are, the uh, high engagement, a high stress environment, usually you're a little more on point. Usually you're going to make a better choice. But how does this relate to the individual that wants to change their life? They want to reset. They want to do better, but they're in this rest and digest state and they're not making the right decisions for themselves. That is where you need to kind of kick yourself in the butt and you need to be clear on a lot of futuristic, idealistic ideas that can create a fight or flight response for you in a very, very minimal dose a very minimal dose because there's no way for me to fire you up to the point that you're going to fight or fl uh, flight. Obviously, if I was to remove your job, uh, put you in debt, have uh, people knock on your door that are going to foreclose, that would put a very high fight or flight response within your internal being. But how do you make the right decisions for you on a regular basis? Well, that A, number one, that's what I'm trying to figure out uh, through research and talking with uh, people in the industry. But the second way that you can alter that right here, right now is to understand, number one, short-term goals, as in something that you can accomplish sooner than later, not a year-long goal. could be a month goal or a week goal. The second thing is, is have something that is going to pull you forward, something that pushes or pulls you forward in the, the regards of if you want to lose the 10 pounds, then you got to figure out why you want to do it, the classic why statement, but also to what is the reward that you can get by losing that 10 pounds. Maybe it's buying a new camera. Maybe it's buying a new outfit. Maybe it's by going on that vacation or whatever the case may be be. And so by you doing that will allow you to kind of figure out the the correlating steps that need to happen for you to have a better emotional response to what you're currently doing. This is not the end all be all podcast. This is a part one of a part maybe two or three. And I'm going to put that in the description here because I believe there's more conversation that needs to happen about emotional warfare than just what I said today. But this was a starting point. You understand the limbic system. You understand about the automatic nervous system. And you understand the type of things that, that potentially need to happen for you to make great decisions in your life. Because everything that you do is based off a decision. Wake up early or not. Eat the right sandwich or not. Go in network or not be a good person or not, you know, spend the money or not. You know what I mean? It's a cause and effect kind of thing. And so we need to be clear on where do these, these emotions come from for us to make better choices and we can make better choices. Then that's where we can live a quote unquote happier and healthier lifestyle, which will allow us to find happiness and joy because at the end of the day, that is what we want. We all know that if we continue down this path of personal growth, that will lead us to being a happier and better person. But along those lines, we need to make the right decisions for that to happen. So with that being said, it's a long-winded conversation, but I feel it was justified. So I appreciate you, and I thank you for um, participating and joining me in this podcast. Uh, this is a book that I'm putting together that can really help and really make things come together. And I'm excited for the more research, the more ideas, the more documentation that I'm going to find that can help you and I become a better decision maker for us to live a better life. So with that being said... Woo! I appreciate you guys. If you want a free t-shirt, head on over to iTunes, leave a review. And if you have already left a review, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Unfortunately, I'm not going to have the ability to give you a t-shirt, um, but there will be new ways for you guys to uh, get things in the future. But if you are on the fence of leaving a review or you never left a review, hopefully this can pry you out of your seat to make that commitment. All I ask of you to go to is Operation Self Reset on iTunes um, and click on Operation Self Reset 
please that leave a review do a screen capture or share with me your user ID so I can make sure that you actually left a re I, uh, review and then from there you can pick any shirt you want and I'll send it to anywhere that you want me to send it free and clear no um, no price to you so with that being said I appreciate you guys to the 10th level um, but one thing I want to do before we end and that's the awesome sauce where we scream at the top of our lungs I'm freaking awesome and this kind of goes hand in hand to my little thing of understanding that if we're able to change the outside emotion we're able to alter the internal emotion and so by us doing this together will allow us to kind of kind of bring it full heart so on the count of three I want you to get in a powerful position I want you to stand with your chest out, your shoulder blades back, put your arms overhead, th thumbs out, fingers out, move the fingers, uh, hang 10, pinkies out, rocking, whatever you got to do, and I want you to scream at the top of your lungs, I'm freaking awesome. So here we go on the count of three. One, two, three, I'm freaking awesome! <laughs> Woo! Yes! Emotional warfare, welfare, it, warfare is well and true inside of you, but you have the ability to make the right choice to alter your decisions that come in front of you on a day-to-day -day basis. Make those right decisions so you can go out there in the world and be a better person, be a freaking awesome individual to yourself first, and then the rest of the world will respond. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Please review if you haven't. I'll send you a free t-shirt. And until next week, Wednesday, keep on being freaking awesome. Share a little bit of awesomeness with somebody who needs it, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. See ya.